Hmm, I've heard that I need some pulling for this project. So let me just go to the asset store and look for pulling. Let's see what I find. Search um, by popularity. Who cares about what's popular? I want the most expensive assets. That's what matters most. So let me see. 44 euros, 53 euros. No, that's not going to cut it. 89 euros. This is exactly what I was looking for. Let's just buy this and uh, let's get rid of all my memory issues, right, on this project. No! Bad Ruben! Don't spend 90 bucks in just pulling. Why? Why would you do that if you just have the access to the new Unity pooling namespace? Yes, indeed, Unity includes a new built-in pooling system from 2021.1 onwards. So yes, there is no need for you to spend money in object pooling libraries or no need to spend time either in creating these systems because Unity does this already for you. So I'm talking about the Unity engine.pool namespace. You can see here a list of different types of pools that, you know, the difference between them is the use case that you want to use them for. Not only the use case, but also the data structures that are within each of these pools. So before anything else, let's see when we need pooling, when we do not need pooling, and how to use it. So let me go to this Unity project. This is the micro FPS project coming from Unity. And here, as you might expect, when I just hit play, the only thing I can do is to move around and shoot around. You see, you click here and that's it. No surprise for a shooter, right? So if you see the shooting effects, we are creating projectiles every time that we shoot. Now there is a problem with doing this very often and this aggravates if you do this several times per frame with different objects in the scene. So let me show you what I mean. Every time I shoot, you see these spikes in the Unity profiler. This is mostly coming from the instantiation of these particles. So if I shoot again, and if we are lucky, you will see that we are indeed instantiating these particles and these projectiles. There we go, there is one, projectile blaster. We spawn them every time that we click and then whenever they touch a surface, they explode. That means that we destroy these particles, okay? So let's see what happens in the profiler. So we have constant 30 bytes of allocations and whenever we shoot, this should go up because after all, we are allocating memory for the new objects, right? So here we have 1.3 kilobytes. Let's see if this is what we are talking about. And every time that you see one of these instantiates, you can think about pulling these things. It depends on the frequency and on the memory that you are consuming. So let's see what is exactly going on. So here we have a projectile standard update function. Let's see more frames. So we keep going. After all, we need to search for the moment where we click. So it could be that it takes a bit of effort to find this place, right? So let's keep scrolling. And here is another one, 1.5 kilobytes, another instantiation going on, this time in the player's weapons manager. Okay, so let's not dig too much into the specifics of this game, but rather show you the effects of doing this, because this is going to happen no matter the type of game that you do. This is going to happen in any project, okay? So every time that you use instantiate, you are creating a copy of a template that will be your prefab, right? So here we have one instantiate and you see that we generate garbage. The problem with this is that Unity after some time has to clean this garbage and that's going to freeze your gameplay for a few seconds, maybe even on mobile, right? That is especially bad in VR because you know, you might just cause that your players end up puking in their experience. And even worse, your Oculus and these other platforms can disallow your game or experience. They can prohibit your application in the store. So the way we solve this is by using pooling. Instead of just 
duplicating these objects or instantiating these projects on demand. Whenever we click this button, we just take them from a pool. That's the idea behind this. Now, how do we do this? All right, if we go back to the profiler, you will see that we have here a handle shoot function that is allocating exactly that amount of memory. You see the instantiation, right? So we could just go to handle shoot in your C sharp IDE, for example. Let's look here for handle shoot. And let's see what's going on. So here we are talking about the weapon controller. This is the system that takes care of the handling of the weapon. And handle shoot, well, just guess what it does. Here we have this instantiation, which is causing pressure in the garbage collector. So what can we do about this? Well, we can just do pulling. So how do we use pulling? Basically, the first thing you want to do is to check the API, right? You will see that there are different types of object pools or pools in general. And then you can read through my blog to see the difference, but we are going to focus on object pool, which is one of the most commonly used ones. So what we need to do is to copy that, right? And what we're going to do is to create an object pool of a specific type. We're talking about projectile base, right? So we are just going to do that. Projectile base, there it is. We're going to import the right API or namespace, which is the Unity engine pool. And then we're going to create one of these pools, right? The way we do this is very easy. We need just to give a list of actions and a different parameters. The first action or function that we need to pass is the create function. This function tells Unity how to create more of what we want. In this case, we are talking about creating projectile bases. How do we create more? Well, just by using the instantiate function. So how do we do this? Well, this is kind of a lambda function. The only thing we need to do is to call instantiate. Now the second parameter is action on get. This is all about preparing the object that we are about to give to the final user. So let's say that we try to take one of the projectiles. Here's the perfect moment to set this up. Okay, we might want to give it an initial velocity or change the color or something along these lines. In this case, we are not going to do anything. The next parameter is going to be on release. This is the function that Unity is going to call every time that you release this projectile, every time that you don't need it anymore and you give it back to the pool. So things that you might want to do is to disable a few things, right? Like to disable the components or to deactivate the object or, you know, to reset the state. It is up to you. In this case, we are going to do, guess what? Nothing. Okay. So we just keep going. The next parameter is going to be the action on destroy. Now this is interesting. So what is going to happen here is that at some point we will change the level, we will stop playing, or we will, you know, just want to destroy the entire thing. If Unity decides that it is time to destroy all your projectiles, then Unity is going to call this function. So how do we destroy game objects? Well, we call destroy. Now, don't forget we're talking about a component, right? So if we're talking about a component, what we need to do instead is to destroy the game object itself. All right, the next parameter is the collection check. This boolean tells Unity whether to check if you return this object already to the pool in the past, right? This avoids, you know, returning the same object twice by mistake. If that was to happen, then it could be that the same object is used in the future by two different users and that will lead to catastrophic results. So my suggestion is to keep it true unless you are doing performance optimization and you know that your system works fine. The next parameter is the default capacity. This is the initial size of the data structure containing your objects. This is not the number of elements that you will have initially. No, this is just the size of your list, of your stack, whatever the data structure is that is behind your object pool. The next one is going to be the max size. If you try to have more elements than this number in that pool, at least, you know, inactive objects, then Unity is not going to allow that. Unity is going to destroy any other element that you try to push into the pool above this limit. This helps you keeping track of the size of your collection, therefore reducing the pressure on the garbage collection system. So this is it. This is the object pool that we need, right? 
So we're going to call this projectile pool. And of course, we don't want to save this locally. We want to create a field. And of course, we also don't want to construct the pool there. We want to create that probably in a wake. So let's just do this. Now, how do we use the projectile pool? So basically, we were using an instantiate so far. Here it is. And instead of doing instantiate, what we're going to do is to call get. Okay. By doing get, we will just get a projectile base. So we're just going to try to keep the structure as close as we can. Now, the problem here is that we still have to give this a position and a rotation. So let's just do that. Let's do this manually by accessing the transform position. And then we do the same for the orientation itself. So there it is, quaternion look rotation. And there we are. Now we should be using the pool. Okay, we're not done yet, don't take me wrong. But now at least we should be able to see some results already. Let's see what happens. Let's play. Now we clean the errors and let's shoot. Does it work? Yes, it doesn't seem to be broken in any way. Now we are not done yet. And you might be wondering, well, this is a pool. Why are these projectiles being destroyed after all? You see that they disappear. Well, the reason is that the original code still does the destroy somewhere else. Where does it happen? Well, let's investigate that. So what I would do here is just to go and use find usages. And here within projectile standard, we might be able to see the destroy itself. So let's look for destroy. Here it is, destroy this game object. So now what we need to do is instead of destroying this game object, we just need to return it to the pool. So how do we do this? Well, it depends. If we want to be correct when it comes to the architecture, then we need to follow a principle, which is the person or class who creates this object should also destroy this. So you will probably need to pass the weapon controller or alone and then do the destroy in the weapon controller and not here. However, we don't have time to do that in this tutorial. So what we are going to do, which is going to be pretty nasty, is just going to make this static and public. Remember, don't do this at home, okay? You don't want to do this. It's going to break a few things, like the possibility of getting faster iteration times. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're just going to do this to show how this works. So we're going to call the weapon controller projectile pool. Let's at least change the naming conventions here. So refactor, rename, and then let's call it projectile pool. And here we're going to ask to return this object. We release this object. So this is what we want to do, right? So that is it. Let's see what happens now. Let's see if there is any difference in the pooling system. So let's play and let's shoot. Okay, so interesting enough, we get this error that, you know, we had the check collections set to true. And luckily Unity is telling us that we are trying to release this object several times. The reason for this is that it is probably hitting the collider of the wall and it keeps trying to destroy it all over again. So yeah, like you can see, it might be a bit of work to get the pooling to work correctly, but this is basically the way you need to use it. First, you create a pool, you give the right parameters, and then you just get and release objects as you need. So let's try to fix this problem. Let's go to the pool itself. And what we're going to do is every time that we release it here, action on release, what we're going to do is to go to the game object and set the active to false. Let's see if this fixes the issue. And the other way around, we also have to get the action on get and we want to set the object itself to active. Otherwise it is not going to work. There it is. Okay. 
Okay, let's see. Let's shoot. Bam, 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 bam. And now it is working much better. You see, this projectile blaster has been created previously when we have shot a few times, and then now we reuse them all the time. So if I shoot again, you will see how it activates on the left, right? Of course, this is still not being perfect because we would need to fix the entire code for this to work well. Okay, we might have different users trying to destroy it, so we have to be careful with that. But this is, you know, one way that you can use pulling. If you open the profiler, you would notice that we are not allocating memory anymore. At least if we did it correctly, but for that we don't have enough time in this tutorial. The main takeaway from this video is this. Don't spend 100 bucks in an object pooling system. Just use Unity 2021 onwards and use the Unity engine pool namespace. Then it is just a matter of creating the pool of the right type. In general, it's going to be the object pool. And then what you need to do is to give it the right creation, get, release, and destroy function. That's about it, okay? The other side of the coin is that you need to be careful with the way that you manage the state. You need to be careful about the users that are going to use this pool. Remember, you want to have the same person creating and destroying the object itself. And once you transition to using pulling, you just need to change this instantiation and destroy operations to get and release. Doing that is going to be super helpful at alleviating the garbage collection pressure, because instead of instantiating and destroying very quickly, what you're going to do is just, you know, in this case, for example, set active to true or to false, okay? Of course, this depends heavily on your use case. So you will need to do your own research but now you know that you have a pooling system in API built in. So now you can go ahead and have fun. If you want to have more performance tips at your hand, only that instead of in 10 minute videos, in 30 to 40 minute videos, what you need to do is to join my game performance task force. Okay, you can join for a trial and this is going to help you accelerate your knowledge in the area of game performance dramatically. So we have each month four lessons, four high quality video lessons. The first week is going to be professional performance. This is all about you becoming a high performing developer. The second week is going to be about CPU lessons. This is all about optimizing everything related to the CPU, physics, gameplay, artificial intelligence, rendering, etc. The third week is about GPU lessons. And this is all about achieving better graphics and also cheaper. And finally, the last week is all about memory optimization. This is the week that is going to help you reduce the memory usage of your project, the memory bandwidth, the loading times, and even the size of your APKs or your build sizes. You can join this membership through a trial, so it's going to be risk-free for you. And on top of that, you get one live lesson each month so that you can ask your questions on the fly and connect with other high-performing developers in the community. All right, I hope this video is useful for you. If you are interested in joining and trying my Game Performance Task Force, then visit the website at taskforce.thegamedev.guru and see you on the inside.